Welcome back to BT Willis Garage. Today we've got a 2015 Chevy Tahoe at the garage for an oil change. You guys know me. Normally I wouldn't work on Chevys, but it's one of my best friend Chris's. It's so, used right now. <laughs> so we made an exception. Just kidding. You know we love Chevys here. All right, guys. So to get started, I'm going to show you a quick example of what it looks like to pull up on these Rhino ramps that I have. There's the Tahoe pulling up. So these are available on Amazon, and there's a link in the description. If you use the Rhino ramps, be sure to use a wheel chock in the back. Chris and I threw some back there just to make sure that the truck does not roll back while we're underneath it. So step one is to pop your hood. Your hood latch is located under your left driver knee. And whenever we get inside the motor, you can see right in front of us here where it says Dexo. That's going to allow the oil to flow a little smoother if we vent it. So just vent it and kind of leave it hanging so no pollen or dust gets in it. While we're working here's a little overview of the tools we're going to need we're going to need a nice oil drain pan to keep your used oil in as it drains out of the tahoe a funnel to add our new oil which normally is a zero w20 you want to go with the dexos i believe that's how it's pronounced oil for your chevy my friend chris decided to go with 5w20 high mileage just to get the viscosity a little right for a high mileage vehicle um, we do have an oil filter removal tool that fits on a 3 8 drive and then we've got our quarter or, Yeah, we got our quarter inch drive with a 15 millimeter as well as a torque wrench to get the uh, Oil filter if we care to as well as drain bolt back on right You'll notice I have cardboard down in case anything leaks I've got gloves to keep my hands clean and I also have a creeper to easily get underneath the truck again we used rhino ramps and um wheel chocks that'll all be in the description if you guys want to conveniently order it off Amazon. All right guys, so I'm not sure if you can see this, but right here is our oil drain bolt. So we're gonna remove that. You can also see the blue filter that we have here. I believe that's the OEM. We're gonna be replacing that with the K&N I showed you earlier. Be aware when you take this bolt off, the oil is gonna shoot out about here. So we wanna have our oil pan and our cardboard appropriately laid. So I've got a breaker bar with a 15. And we're going to go lefty loosey. Good gracious, the dealership put this on tight. That's why it's important to torque your bolts. I feel like sometimes they do it so homeowners and car owners or whoever you are can't get it done. I'm going to move that away for just a second so we get more leverage. Because they really have this thing on tight. All right, once it starts leaking just a little bit, hopefully it leaked on your cardboard, you want to keep forward pressure on the bolt and have your hand on your drain bucket. Now, I'm probably going to get a little on my hand here just because I'm trying to keep you guys in play or in shot. But we're going to really quickly, while keeping forward pressure, right at that last thread, I feel it getting there. All right, you ready? Here we go. Went way further back, right on the cardboard, thank God. So you want to stay underneath here, and as it comes out, there's eight quarts coming out, so be sure your container is large enough to catch it. Um, as it starts to die off, you want to guide the drain pan with the stream of the oil. So we'll fast forward this and show you that. All right, guys, so I have this oil filter remover tool that fits any size oil filter, or many of them, as long as they're within a certain size. So we're just gonna turn this to the left. And now, it's important to have a rag nearby, and wear safety glasses when you're doing this. Don't be an idiot like me. But it's important to have a rag nearby because it is naturally gonna get on a little bit of the underbody, and we wanna be able to clean that up so it doesn't smoke and stink for the first few miles. So you just want to carefully just keep turning this. And here in two seconds, I'm going to need to adjust my pan because it will leak. So at this point, we can likely remove our tool and do it by hand. Again, it's going to drip down this frame here, and that's okay. When it comes to a slow drip, you can go ahead and remove the rest by hand. Again, wear gloves and safety glasses. It's kind of a nasty job. And you can tell when it gets to the end of the thread, you don't want to drop it, so start going pretty slow. 
and then carefully lower it down and turn it into your drain bucket. We're gonna let this continue to drain until it stops to a very, very slow drip. And then we're gonna reinstall our drain bolt and then reinstall our new oil filter. I'm used to drain bolts that normally have a washer seal, like a gasket washer here. This one seems to be built into the drain bolt. I'm not sure if they normally use new ones each time, but this one's still in good shape, so we're gonna go with it. If there ends up being a part to replace that little gasket there, I'll put it in the description, but as you can see, this one's in good shape, so we're comfortable reusing it for today. This is a torque wrench. I'm gonna try to keep my glove back there to where you can see it. There's 10 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds right on that 30 line and that's what we're going to torque the drain bolt back down to all right i just normally wipe my finger across the portion of the oil pan that the drain bolt goes we're going to tighten this down quickly by hand and then i'm going to get my torque wrench out might have to move our drain pan now with the torque wrench this is going to be in the description you go until you hear it click. You hear that click? That means it's at 30 pounds. It cuts itself off perfectly so you don't over tighten it. Kind of like the dealership may have done, but honestly a little over tightening doesn't hurt anything. So no harm done. We're back in action. Let's get the oil filter on. Here is our new oil filter. Again, we went with K&N HP 1017. I've got a little old oil on my glove. It's okay to use old oil because it doesn't touch the inside of the motor but this allows the little ring here not to stick to the to the uh, truck and so it comes off easier you want to make sure you get a good amount on so that it doesn't freeze up and you can take it off with that tool that I told, showed you earlier typically with these style oil filters what we want to do too is pre-fill just a little bit now this is debatable whether you need to or not but I've always done it my whole life so I'm gonna do it again today too we're just gonna put a little bit of the first five quarts that we have in there so that it's pre-filled and the truck sees oil immediately when we turn it on. And we can use some of that new oil to actually lube up that gasket too. All right, carefully spin this on. Keep in mind you have oil in it, so don't turn it to the side. All right, we're going right back where we were before. Now take note, it looks like this k and a little short body of a filter compared to our other, which is fine. K&N is known to be rated well for six to 10,000 miles, even a little more. So we feel comfortable using it, even though the OEM filter's a little longer. I wanted to mention that so it didn't scare anybody. All right. All right, now that we've got our oil filter snugged up, hand tight, can't really turn it back by hand, so it's on there good. We are done underneath the truck. You can just kind of wipe everything down that had oil on it and we're gonna go fill up our new oil. Be sure not to crank the truck during this time. It's a good idea sometimes to put the oil on the hood or at least leave your hood open so you know not to crank your truck whenever it's out of oil. Here we go, we're gonna take off the oil cap. We're gonna get our filter in in a way that it does not spill. Might actually need Chris's hand for this one. Anyone that is vertically challenged may need a step stool, especially if you use those Rhino ramps. So with Chris holding that and me trying not to spill, we're gonna put the first five quarts in. Keep in mind to use the container that you use to fill the oil filter because we wanna take account of that 10th of a quart or whatever it was. So we'll speed this up, but this is five quarts going in. So guys, if you buy the oil I put in the description, we'll put the high mileage in the Zero W20. Here's how you read oil quarts. So if we're gonna go with eight, which is what this truck takes, we need to stop right at this two line. Not the leaders, but the quarts. So we're gonna go until right there. We can even go a little under and make sure we don't overfill it. It's better to underfill it a little versus overfill it. So we're gonna leave it about there, just in case the truck had some oil left in the motor from it being lifted on the Rhino ramps. It could have not drained all the way. So, uh, and that's okay to have some old oil in, but we definitely don't want to have to take that drain plug out or siphon some out, it makes it tough. All right, grab your rag, keep it underneath your uh, funnel so that it does not drip on your truck. Go ahead and put your oil cap back on. 
and we are good to go. All right, guys, so next what we're going to do is close our hood. We're going to remove our wheel chocks that I told you not to forget. And then also, during this time, you want to take a quick look under the truck and make sure you don't have a socket or anything sharp that's going to pierce the tire. It's okay that we have that uh, oil drain pin because this truck has enough lift on it to where it should not scrape, but I'll probably pull that out anyway just to be sure. So Chris just pulled the Tahoe off of the ramps as you saw, and what we're doing is letting the new oil warm up for about three, four, or five minutes, and then we're going to check the dipstick. After that, we're going to show you how to reset the maintenance minder, the maintenance reminder. Some people call it maintenance minder. All right, guys, here's our dipstick. We want to lift up the lock, pull it up and out, catch anything that comes off. And now that the truck is warm, we want to make sure that it gets to the top bubble. The bottom is the minimum. The top bubble is the max. So we're going to wipe that off so we can see th straight through it. See that there? You can see through it. It doesn't have any liquid we're going to put it back in all the way down this is a long one that's what she said and you can see that we're right at the full mark we're a little bit over the full mark which is why i'm glad we didn't put two uh right at eight quarts in so this truck is good to go there's no need to take any out because we know how much we put in and we can tell how much we took out if we check our drain pan but we want to lock this in and then snap that lock back down so it doesn't come loose when we're off-roading, picking up chicks at the mall. <laughs> All right, so you want to set your maintenance reminder. You want to go to the dashboard where it talks about your oil right here. And you want to hold down this check mark. Now we're fully back at 100%, ready to go. So there's a couple different ways you can reset the maintenance reminder. The other way is to have the car on, but not fully on, just have the electronics on. And then you want to tap your gas pedal three times, slowly. One, two, three. And that'll reset it as well. We haven't verified that one, but just in case our method didn't work, we wanted to give you the other method we had researched. This concludes our Chevy Tahoe oil change. I really appreciate Chris coming by letting us use his vehicle to feature on the channel. If you like this content, you know what to do. Um, so guys, we'll see you next time on BT Willis Garage. Thanks for checking us out. Peace. I can have any friend or family member come over and have what I need to cut. Okay, so now that we've spun our new filter on, <laughs> God, that's, that's going in the outtakes. <laughs> and you knocked yourself unconscious. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I need an extension.